this hang on a second this meeting is being recorded sorry continue okay. uh, open houses a lot of listings a lot of agents right now listing homes are doing uh aggressive open houses mm -hmm. because of the the market we're in a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of interest and it builds up the the, the crowd the urgency mm -hmm. if you do choose to go to one i would prefer us setting up private showings but second they go live if they look good let's go look at them okay but if you do if you do choose to go to an open house just let the agent that's there holding it know that you are working with an agent because they have a little bit of an agenda of their own to try to reel in some clients so sure. um letting them know that will give you the comfort of knowing they're not going to be breathing down your neck as you walk through the house um and then there will be forms sent to you okay. from here until we close forms whether it's online uh, or in the mail if you don't understand it don't sign it mm -hmm. contact me i'm happy to help you understand what it is make sure it's legitimate because mm -hmm. there are scammers out there mm -hmm. um because it's important that you know what you're signing from here on out mm -hmm. um and communication it's a two-way street i i want to match your motivation that's my goal okay is I'm, i don't want to overbearingly bother you but i don't want you to ever feel like you're on the back burner or you're being neglected i'm here to match your motivation so I, I like texting. I like calling. I like being in touch. I like mm -hmm. communicating. So if we're not communicating enough or communicating too much, let me know. Okay. I'm here to make it, make it fun and easy for you. So makes sense. I'm going to be working for you now. There is a search that I'm going to put in place that we're going to utilize together online. Okay. But and I'll go into detail about what that search is, but between you and me, I'm going to be out there hunting for your home. So it's tough market, very low inventory. Supply and demand makes it tough. So when things go up, they get a lot of attention and they get a lot of offers mm -hmm. when they're priced right and, and, and move in shape. It's a, if it's a nice property, it's going to have a, uh, a multiple offers is the market we're in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to utilize my ability to talk to other agents in Keller Williams, um, put out posts. I have a guy named Bill who dates a woman named Jill who <laughs> needs this needs mm -hmm. three bedrooms in this area i'll put posts out to see if anyone's working on upcoming listings where they might have something that aligns with us um because that's an advantage in this market to where we could go look before it even hits the market and take a look at the home mm -hmm. um which could be very helpful if, uh if we find the right ones um and there's a, a it's a network of over 200 agents that i can reach out to so it really covers a lot mm -hmm. and just like I said, for sale by owners, I'm going to, in the mornings when I'm sipping my coffee, Bill, looking at new listings, I'm going to look at new for sale by owners. Anything looks interesting, we're going to talk about it. Um, and to secure the home too, that's another big factor in this market right now. Mm -hmm. You can go online and see what's out there. Yep. You know, There's tons of sites that show you what's out there, but it's really having the ability to write a good offer, get in in time and get it selected over other offers. So mm -hmm. helping you secure the home, I'm going to advise you Bill, I'm going to tell you the strategies, the things in, in place that I know work in, in this market with, with, with an offer, uh, but ultimately guide you to your comfort zone. Okay. I wouldn't want you to do things you're uncomfortable doing. Yeah. There are going to be some things that are uncomfortable to tell you to do. Sure. But ultimately, it's because looking out for your best interest, that's what I feel it will take to get a home. Yeah. And when it has, when it has 15 offers. How are we going to stand amongst the other 14? Yeah, and I've heard, I've had a friend who was searching for months and he saw a bajillion houses and wrote a bajillion offers. I don't want to do that. If I don't I can want to avoid. do that either. Okay. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to wait, write a, billion, a bajillion offers. Sometimes in this market, it's taking people to lose and get hurt and burned to learn what you have to do to win. Okay. So if you and I talk about things ahead of time and you trust what it will take, we can shorten that cycle instead of a bajillion, maybe just a couple. Okay. <laughs> um, so I have a great team behind me. Like okay. I said, I've been working in real estate for eight years and the team that I'm on allows me to hone in on what I'm good at and being a buyer's agent. And we have other members of the team that are great at what they do. Cool. They make us a super awesome team. Cool. So here's a picture of all our team members. Uh, Amy Guthrie is our team leader, listing specialist. So she's, she's the, the rainmaker, she is the listing specialist. She's going to be working with all the sellers listing the properties. Uh, myself, Jackie, Tom, and Chris are buyer agents on the team. Um, so, Bill, if I'm ever unavailable, sick, out of town, oh, okay. Tom, Jackie, or Chris could step in, show you a home, so you're not missing a beat. Okay. Um, okay. I am human. However, I'm a bachelor with a dog, and I never get sick, so <laughs> good luck getting me. But if I, for some reason, do take a little couple-day vacation, and something pops up, and you need me for something, we have people in place. That's that good to know. Great as well, and could take great care of you. Um, Lee, Break script for a second. Yeah. For those of you who are not 
agents on a team. I think uh, if you're on the productivity coaching or you have other other agents that you have connections with, obviously you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. But being able to speak to that is something that every agent should be able to do, even if you're not formally on. So people on a will team. go anywhere they can if their agent doesn't answer them. Yep. Yep. So yes. Um, so yeah, Bill, you, you know we will always be there for you. Sherry and Leanne are our two women in the behind the scenes that work mm -hmm. in the office. Sherry is our closing coordinator. So once we do find you a home and we get under contract, I will send her all the documents related. Mm -hmm. She will make sure title company, lender, everyone's doing their job, staying on pay, on the right page. And she will send you weekly updates. Okay. Uh, will I still on. be in touch with you yes. once? Okay. I was just about to say, you're going okay. to be, I'm going to be in your back pocket the whole way. If you have any questions, I'm there for you. But just an extra layer of understanding what's going on. Sherry will provide those weekly updates. Cool. Um, and then Leanne is our marketing director. So she does all of the brochures, all the paperwork, all this packet that you see, she put together nicely and uh, she does all of our TikToks. So we're kind of, uh, we're kind of TikTok famous, Bill. That's how I found Roman yeah. was his, his TikTok dance yeah. moves. Uh, um, so approaching to the favorite sheet of mine for first time home buyers. It's like Candyland. Yes, and I recommend if you have a good piece at home, go ahead, put it put it down and move it along as we proceed. Okay, you wanna hold it up so folks can. Sure, so it's a nice little <clears throat> sheet that shows from meeting with me to getting the keys, what they can expect. Um, and Bill, since this is your first time, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're curious when you're gonna be paying money. You yeah. Know, when you could expect once we get a, contract accepted when our key is going to be in your hands. Mm -hmm. So those those kinds of um, answer or questions will be answered as I go through, through Candyland. Cool. Candy land with you. Okay. So the buyer consultation is step one. That's where you and I, like I said earlier today, get to know each other and really form a plan of attack on how we can succeed. Cool. Step two, have you talked are you planning on purchasing cash or taking a loan out i wish i could purchase cash no i i i, I need a loan though i don't have one i haven't talked with okay. anybody yet and i don't know how that works perfect you're on, you're you're on you're on get that game piece put on number two okay so after our meeting today um i don't know if you had anybody you were thinking of talking to lender wise mm -mm. i have a list of some great local lenders that do a fantastic job I'm happy to send it your way. Okay. Um, and I'd be happy to have one reach out to you to your convenience so that you can get started on the conversations of, you know, what's this going to cost me per month? What can I afford? They can go through. Can I just that. wait until we found a house before I talk with a lender? So the reason why it's number two is because we have to get all of our ducks in a row. And if anything were to if a property becomes alive and you need to see it, you want to see it, it looks good. We walk through it, we fall in love with it we aren't going to have time to get a pre-approval letter before we have to get that offer in. Okay. We want to make sure we have, and it will have about a three month expiration date. Okay. So as long as we find you something in those three months, if not, you'd have to, you know, get it re renewed, but I'm planning on getting a new car soon. Oh, you're, you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so would that impact things? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get the new card. <laughs> so there is a do's and don'ts page in here that, okay. that shows you once we get under contract, you pretty much don't do anything. Okay. Don't pay off credit cards. Don't start new credit cards. Don't buy a car. Okay. Don't buy a ring for Jill. Okay. You know, hold off until we close. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so getting that pre-approval letter though, uh, Bill, will make it a lot easier and successful for us to okay. start looking homes when we have that in place. That makes sense. Um, Number three, once we have pre-approval, you now understand. You're now financially um, confident. Okay. You know what you can afford. You know what you're pre-approved up to. You know if you go to the max of your pre-approval, what it's going to be per month for you. Okay. Roughly. Okay. You, you have that understanding. That's what that's going to do for you, step two. That's when we're going to put our search into place and start previewing homes. Mm -hmm. So one layer of just your basic layer of keep an eye on things, I'm going to set up a search through the MLS directly. Okay. Um, at the end of our meeting, I'm going to take your order. What, what you're looking for, Bill. Um, areas you're open to, absolutely must-haves, everything you can tell me. And then with what you tell me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start up search up through the MLS. Okay. It'll go to your email. It'll show you currently what's available. And then anytime a new listing hits the market, you'll get an email from me. Okay. That's automated. So that's just the basic layer one. Just keep an eye on what's out there. Okay. Anything looks interesting, you want to see it, you contact me. Text, call, the moment you see it, you know, speed to getting in there. Um, if, 
if we wait, if we, you know, think on it, sleep on it, we're not going to sleep in it. Okay. So, um, getting, getting in those that's homes. A, that's, a, that's a one liner right there. That's a good one. <laughs> getting in those homes is very important. So once we're now touring homes, mm -hmm. you know, at every home we look at my, just so you know, no, I'm not negative, but I'm going to point out the negatives. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, my goal is to point out reasons why you shouldn't buy a house. Okay. I know that sounds counterproductive, but you're going to understand why when we're walking through them. Okay. My goal, Bill, since we're going to have to really flex and show our muscles when we write offers and really get in uncomfortable areas and really go big, mm -hmm. I don't want to waste your time and money. Mm -hmm. So if we're walking through a house and I see um, a wall bowing and mold and all this, it, all this interesting fun things that mm -hmm. could be safety issues or big ticket items, mm -hmm. I'm going to point them out to you clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're uncomfortable, let's get out of there. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, getting under contract, having inspections that cost money, that's things I don't want to waste your time. So if we can identify issues ahead of time and find the good homes, that's that's the goal. Sure, that makes sense. When we see something that really gives you the warm and fuzzies mm -hmm. and you're starting to get excited, I can see myself here, Roman, mm -hmm. you know, my couch would fit perfectly in this corner. Mm -hmm. The Jill's mural would look great. <laughs> um, that's when I'm going to give you homework. Okay. And I'm going to say, Bill, go home, right? Right on a piece of paper, your pros and your cons okay. of buying this home. Because it's an emotional thing. Looking at a home, you're going to have a lot of stuff swirling around in there. Get yeah. it out on paper, absorb it, look at it, okay. and then we'll talk. And if it sounds like something you want to move forward in, hold on to that pro and con sheet. How long between seeing it and writing an offer should I expect? expect to have? Well, yeah. it could be anywhere from 35 seconds to a couple hours. Okay. No, I understand. But it, <laughs> there might be situations, Bill, where we have to make a fast decision. Okay. And that's why I want you to do your homework. We're always going to have time to do some homework. Sure. Um, my goal, if you love something and you're going to do your homework, I'm going to do my homework. I'm okay. going to call the listing agent, get the scoop. What's going on? Are there offers? Is there anything I should be aware of? Mm -hmm. um, what's important to the seller? You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting all the juice, all the good stuff, so we can write a good offer. Okay. Find out when offers are due, if there's a deadline, all that. Um, there are times where multiple offers come in and they say, say it's a Thursday, they say, we're going to hold everything open until Sunday at noon. That's when offers are due. If that's the case, then we have time to think on it, craft our offer, get it in. Okay. You have time to think on it. Okay. Um, there are, will be some times though, where you might, we might come across one where it's like, well, our de the deadline's in four hours, but we have time to go look at it and make it happen if you really want to. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm open to do that for you. Okay. Um, just getting the homework and doing everything in place will make these decisions easier, even though they're fast. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's a good reminder down the road, this pro and con sheet, once we do decide, yes, we're moving forward this property, it makes sense. If you have a little scary moment from now to closing, because it happens, mm -hmm. you're like, what am I doing? I'm buying a house. Mm -hmm. Well, revert back to the pro and con sheet. And it's going to remind you, Bill, that you're not going to Vegas and blowing all your money. Right. You're making a good decision. You're buying real estate. Right. And those will support that. Um, so once we get our homework done, you're like, let's do this. We'll craft that offer. Mm -hmm. And who knows whether we get the first one we try or the second or the third. Um, ultimately, I'm going to guide you and help you get the first one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we get our offer accepted. And that's when the first bit of money would be due. Okay. So it's called your earnest deposit, your earnest check. And that would be your deposit that goes in to the title company's escrow account and to be held there until closing. Okay. Usually it's $1,000. Um, depending on our situation, though, putting a little bit more down could be beneficial to our offer. It could be a little bit of a tactic to help get our offers left. And so okay. Anywhere between a thousand, maybe two thousand. It's part of your down payment. Okay. The earnest check. So okay. that would be applied at closing to your down payment. Then you would owe the rest. Um, that money is being held in escrow. So contractually, if we do have our inspections and there are non-negotiable issues, something we can't get forward past, if we find some things out, you cannot move forward and buy the home. Okay. Um, I will work on getting that refunded for you. Okay. Um, but there needs to be a valid reason. There needs to be a valid reason. Okay. So it has to be signed off on by the seller okay. to release that earnest money. So if we get under contract on a home, Bill, everything's going well. Inspections go well. Appraisal goes well. Everything's going well. We're getting close to closing. And then you you and Jill realize you don't want this house. Mm -hmm. You No real, you just, it's not the one for you. The state of Ohio will not make you buy the house, but there will be repercussions. Okay. I, don't, I don't think I can get you that earnest money back. Um, and that would be something that we could, you know, but 
ultimately we do it the right way, mm -hmm. the Roman way, mm -hmm. and we do our homework, we won't be running into those issues. Okay. Okay. Um, so after we send our earnest money in, the lender will be in touch with you to talk about your loan application and getting that set up so that they can work on getting your loan approved. Um, they will also order appraisal. So all of this is in the first week. They're going to work on loan approval, loan application, sorry, order the appraisal, and we're going to do our due diligence, do okay. our inspections. Okay. So all that's in the first seven to 14 days, inspections, appraisal. Um, Appraisal is going to cost you a little bit too. So you, okay. have, you have your earnest check, earnest money of a thousand down. Your appraisal is going to be about three, four hundred dollars. The lender is going to charge you that. Okay. And then the inspection, if it's a general inspection that we do, that's about three hundred twenty-five dollars. But then if the home you find has a well or septic, that's an additional inspection okay. potential. So I like to say about six hundred dollars for inspection. Okay. Coupled with these other fees, expect to pay about two thousand dollars in that first two weeks. Okay. Thousand, and some of that would go towards my down payment and thousand, some of it wouldn't. A thousand okay. of it will go towards your down payment and then the other thousand roughly, okay. um, give or take, but we'll go back, we'll go towards the inspections and appraisal. Okay. So that's the money that I don't want to waste for you. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find a good home, make, make sure we feel great about it. And that's the money that will be going into the due diligence and making sure it has the value and it's in the good condition. Okay. Um, after we get the appraisal results, value is good and everything's good there. And what effect. if what if it's the value isn't good? What does that mean? So if the value is low, then it would pause the sale. So the bank would say, well, hold on, we need either the seller to drop price to appraisal value, the buyer to come up money to, to bridge that gap, or a combination of the two. So we can meet and, have, and the value's got to be with the bank. Okay. In the market that we're in, a lot of times with the offers that we write, we might have to write in that you're if you're able to, that you're willing to spend a little bit of out-of-pocket money towards a low appraisal, if it were to appraise low. Okay. Since it's a very strong seller's market, uh, buyers, I mean, sellers don't really feel like they have to drop the price because they can just find another buyer. So that's okay. where we might have to step up. And But case by case, they'll all let you know, you know, if, if and when that time comes, what we could potentially do to position ourselves the right way. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we do have a good track record of sales in this past year okay. to support six months to a year. They look three to six months. We have a good history for comparable sales. So appraisals, as long as we do what we're supposed to be doing and not writing 300,000 on a $50,000 shack, <laughs> we should be in, we should be in a pretty good shape, but okay. you never know. It's case by case. So sure. we'll, we'll do the best we can to protect ourselves. Um, and after that first two weeks of all that that goes on, inspections, appraisal, then things kind of die down. Okay. And for the next two weeks, your lender is going to be working on finalizing the approval. Title company is going to be working on the paperwork they need to work on to prepare for closing. And then about three weeks, 25 days into the contract, roughly, we'll be getting those magic words clear to close. And that's when title company will reach out to you to schedule closing. Okay. We'll be at a table kind of like this. Um, title representative, myself and you, and Jill, she wants to come. Mm -hmm. And we'll... Um, sign all the paperwork. For Does closing. she need to sign on any of it? If you are just going to be on the loan, Phil, no. Okay. Only if the lender wants to see it match who's on the loan. Okay. So, so if we're, we're buying it together, she then, needs to be on it. Then okay. she's going to sign everything with you. Okay. Correct. Um, and before we do sign though, we have the right to do one last final walkthrough okay. of the property just to make sure there is no damage or anything changed to the property since we were last there. Um, since it is about to change title and go into your name. Mm -hmm. And then I'll remind you to transfer utilities, forward mail, but that does depend on possession. So okay. if it's a vacant house, you get those keys when we close. So from offer acceptance, 30 to 35 days after you'd be getting the keys. If okay. the home is being lived in, there's going to be a negotiated time that they may need after closing till they can get out. Okay. You will know that ahead of time. You'll know that way when we get the offer. Okay. Though. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's the process. It's a lot. It is a lot. But I feel going over this with uh, soon to be homeowners mm -hmm. is very beneficial to understand when money's due, kind of timetable. So Bill, this is a very helpful for renters, especially that are buying homes. So you said you're in a, a lease until June? Correct. So if we were to say, so we're in March right now, say we found something in a week, mm -hmm. very soon, you got it under contract, and we closed end of April. So your first month 
mortgage payment wouldn't be due until June 1st. Oh, okay. So if that's we, nice. If we took two weeks to find something, say, and we closed early May, that full month would have to finish. And then another calendar month before your first payment in June would be due. Mm -hmm. or, sorry, July mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, if we closed in May, it'd be, it'd be in July. So that gives you the ability to understand that we can really get, get you in line with the lender and put the green light on now and keep an eye on things. Okay. Um, because timing wise, you won't be really in position to have double payments right. too much. That's really helpful. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. And I'd be happy to let you know when it'd be a comfortable time to alert the landlord, you know, okay. the 30 days, because we want to get past inspections and appraisal. Make sure it's going. Make sure everything's solid. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, after all of that, I give you those keys and the house is yours, your homeowner. Okay. So any questions based on the process? And what we've gone over. No, that was that was really helpful. I, I it, it felt like some big hairy thing, and now I, I I have a sense of where we're going. Well, that's my goal is just mm -hmm. to give you confidence to know it because the unknown is scary. Mm -hmm. Buying a house, you know, this is your first time. I'm in in this every day. It's what I do full time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it might just be simple for me, but I'm here to slow it down for you to know every step of the way. You got support. We have things in place to help find it, and. I mean, yeah, I can tell you how good of an agent I am all day long, but really the best ability to brag about is availability. Okay. And so I, when I first started selling real estate mm -hmm. as a buyer's agent, a young buyer's agent, I was just trying to meet everyone I could help them all out. And I felt like I got to the point where I was a chicken with his head cut off. Like I couldn't truly, I was spread too thin. I couldn't help everybody. It was a lose-lose for everyone. Mm -hmm. So over the years of trying to like craft my uh, job and my art, I have learned to work with my clients exclusively. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Establish a working relationship. Okay. So that means I'm your age of 100% and I will give you my um, 100%. You'll be my best interest. I will look out for your priority of mine though. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's call it a buyer agency agreement. Okay. I put this into place and this is basically going to talk about today's date and I usually put six months. So let's talk six months to get together and help you find a house. If okay. after six months, we still don't find something, that's when we'll revisit this, make sure you're happy with how I'm servicing you as an agent, make sure we're on the same page. Okay. Typically it doesn't get to that point though. We find something well before that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But this just states that working relationship. So after learning, I can't help everybody at once. Right. Spread too thin. I only work with five to seven people at a time. Okay. That way I'm available for everybody Okay. and shortens the cycle for everybody too. Instead of taking, like you said, a bajillion offers and months and months, mm -hmm. we can find you something much sooner mm -hmm. and get something under contract. So today's date is the 14th, correct? Yes. Pi day. Yes. What if I'm not pleased with the level of service you're providing sure. six months in? So even if you're unhappy with the service next week, okay, you let me know. Okay. I, this agreement is not to be held against you for leverage. It's, okay. it's to prioritize you as one of my clients that I'm going to help in the next few weeks to next month or so. Okay. Um, so in the morning when I'm sipping my coffee, I, could, and I have my list of my priority clients, Bill and Jill, what mm -hmm. could work for them? Mm -hmm. um, if at any time you're unhappy with me, you call me and we talk about it. If, if I, if, if we feel that I'm not a good fit, we're not a good fit and I can't help you, we tear this up. We void it, tear it up. Okay. And you find who you're not going to sue me. No, I'm not going <laughs> to sue you. I'm not going to hold it against you. And I, I'd even help you find somebody that would, could help you. Okay. My goal is to make this easy for you, not complicate it. Okay. Uh, but this I appreciate really that. that makes me feel better. This really establishes Bill, a, a working relationship between us. And it does bring up the fact that there is a brokerage fee of $225 at okay. closing. Okay. It's kind of like a doc fee when you buy a car. Okay. You know, you signing this agreement doesn't mean that that's why you have this. You would have this anyway. Yeah. It's just bringing it up. Okay. So you okay. understand that it's there. Okay. Um, and six months from now, 9, 14, 22. And then I'm going to sign this. And at any time you have a question, a property pops up, you need me. This is your permission slip to text, call me anytime. Okay. Anytime. Challenge accepted. So, <laughs> and it, okay, you, you call me at two in the morning. No, I might not answer, but I'll get to you when I wake up. Mm -hmm. So it just gives you that permission. You're never a bother to me. I'm here to help you. Okay. Um, and match that motivation, like I said. Um, if you could be so kind, 
And then I'll get you a copy of this as well. Okay. If you can sign that for me. Bill, Jill. Great. And then there is one other document required by the state that I go over with you, the consumer guide. Okay. And what this states is as a licensed agent, as a licensed realtor, mm -hmm. I can represent sellers, I can represent buyers, or in some cases, represent both sides. It was called hmm. a dual agency. Okay. So my, my, me, myself, I'm a buyer agent, but you saw my team, we have a listing agent as well. Mm -hmm. So what this means to you is if my team lists a home that looks interesting, let's go look at it. Mm -hmm. If you want to write an offer and see if you can buy it, we would have to disclose to all parties that it's a dual agency. So even okay. though, even though Bill, I'm working with you uh -huh. and for your best interest and say Amy on my team would be working for the seller in their best interest, we're on the same team under the same umbrella. Sure. We would have to make sure all parties are aware and okay with that. That makes sense. And if any party has an issue, we could reassign an agent just to make it not a dual agency. Sure. Okay. That and makes then sense. the second page does go over how uh, we follow fair housing so we don't discriminate and we ask the same with our clients. Does that make sense? And if you could sign that you acknowledge that. Cool. I appreciate it. I'll get you copies of those two things. And then this is all yours. Okay. That you've been going over. My cards in there as well. So well, I appreciate your help. I, yeah, I was going to say, do you have any, before I take your order in terms of what you're looking for, because that's what I, I, I'm going to need some ammo mm -hmm. to put into the system and really keep an eye on things for you. Do you have any questions about the process, about myself? Well, you told me I can't buy my, my car, so nope. that's that. Um, With the Tesla on hold. Yeah. Uh, no, you handled it pretty well. Um, I'm sure things will pop up, but I think sure. that's that's good for now. Let's let's get started. Awesome. So we'll we'll break script here, and this is normally when we would do the three bed, two bath, yeah. which school district, that sort of thing. Um, and go get after it from there. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's give a hand to Mr. Roman. Uh, um, we have a, one or two questions. Uh, Becky asks, how do you find FISBOs? You wanna tackle that? Sure, so I, I mean, I use a couple of different sources. I, I'll use Zillow, I use FISBO.com. Um, you can filter based on for sale by owner on on Zillow on Zillow filter for sale. And, and that tends to be the most common source that for sale by owners use. So yep. I'll start there. Um, but even if it's something that is an older listing mm -hmm. that you're not sure if it's available yet, sometimes just sending that over shows that buyer you're looking yeah elsewhere. Yep. Um, right. But yeah, Zillow would be your number one. Okay. Uh, do you have a pros and cons sheet you can share with us? I'm guessing no. Uh, Becky asked, do you have a pro and con sheet when you were talking about sitting down and doing the homework? No. So I used to have in my old packets years ago, a blank sheet with a cross on it, pro and mm. cons. Mm -hmm. But I kind of over time realized, I mean, a lot of people are using their phones anyway, where they just yeah. do a pro column and a con column. Um, but no, if, if anybody doesn't seem like gung ho to do it, I push them. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I'm not a list maker myself. I don't like doing it, mm -hmm. but I was pushed to do it when I bought. Yep. And I understand why. So just giving them, you know, like uh, reason to believe it's really going to help them. And just general mm -hmm. pros, pros and cons. It could even be about buying in general, just specifically about the house buying, give them the, you know, the support they need to say no or yes. Um, but yeah, just a basic pro and con sheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other questions. Yes, we'll 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 um, find at least a version of it um, and equip you with that. Taylor. Yeah, because that that sheet with showing when money's due and how like you're renting. So like if we close in this month, like you're not your first payment's not going to be due until this day. Those things give people so much confidence and help. Yes. So that when we're done with our meeting, we're looking at homes in the next day or two. Right. I want to give them that confidence that. Because if if they're if, if they if you leave me not really fully confident, we might not start looking. Life happens, and then that lowers the percentage of things really happening. Right. So the more real and comfortable and confident I can make them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the gut through group policy on if a uh, bill over here never gets pre-qualified? Do you still show up homes? Oh, I have my own policy on that. I mean, if if they're neglecting to get pre-approved after I show them one home. 
we had a problem. You'll so do, you do, a, you'll do a first date. I'll do a first date. Mm -hmm. So you go meet, you let him know so, who you are. Yeah. <laughs> if after this, Bill doesn't talk to a lender yeah. and then he wants to see a house, I'll go show him one. Okay. And then, Bill, I came and showed you this one, but like I told you, it's really important. We got to make sure our ducks are in a row. Mm -hmm. And once they are, we'll continue our search. And I do respectfully out of both for both of our time. Yeah, and you can even just say, I don't want I don't want to waste your time right, in this right. market. You know, it's it's you valuing them like, hey, if we find the one and we're not in a position to write, what right. service am I doing to you? Mm -hmm. okay. Charlie asked, uh, do you tell the client that this is a team approach and looking for a home, meaning that we both should be looking or should they believe that all they do is sit back and view as the agent do all the looking? Yes. I have some clients that do nothing and do not respond bond a lot just let me do all the searching that's a good question because it's case by case 100 mm -hmm. and i i didn't ask bill yeah but i'm starting to especially with these millennial these young home first time home buyers they're they're constantly online they're looking at facebook marketplace they're going to be looking yeah so when i know like like listen bill i know you're going to be on your phone you told me you're going to be on your phone looking let's look together yeah. Let's start a let's start a text thread. You, me, and Jill. Mm -hmm. If anybody sees something, throw it in the. I, I say this to my clients all the time. Mm -hmm. Throw it in the text thread. I'll I'll I'll, I'll clear it. I'll see if it's available. Mm -hmm. Um, and but identifying it up front is important. Yeah. Because they're going to expect something, whether it's from a previous experience, someone else they knew experience. Their expectations are everything, so you have to control those expectations in your meeting. If they expect. Roman to call them three times a day with new listings, but I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to set them up on the search and then text. They're not going to be happy with me. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't want to be bumped, I have had clients that when I see something I want, I'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. Period. Don't bother me. Mm -hmm. And they're serious buyers. They just don't want the calls, the text. So yeah, just identifying it early up front yep. is important, but everyone's a little bit different. Um, and getting on the same page. I mean, and that's part of the where do we go from here aspect of the conversation. Dan, did you want to say something now or did you want to wait till the end? Yeah, no, I, you know, getting back to his, uh, the question about the initial, you go and show them one home. If some miracle, hey, I like this house, I want to write an offer on it, but they're not pre-approved. Do you basically tell them, you know, the seller, the, the listing agent's not going to take this offer seriously. Do you still, you know, waste your time to write the offer? Or how do you how do you kind of approach that um, if they're not pre-approved or just tell them like, hey, this is why you have to call your lender because you know. No, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I I I uh I don't think I would write an offer without a pre-approval, not in this market. Even if I wrote a letter of promise and explanation, I just don't think it's a service to my client to write an offer without a pre-approval. So I would in that moment, if I was showing a house that's happened before, that first house they loved it, they want to write. I'm now contacting the local lenders that I know answer their phone on a dime. Mm -hmm. See if I can make something happen. See if I can get this person pre-approved. Now they may not work with that lender. I'm not promoting this to be a practice, yep. but if, if one of my connections can get a pre-approval in place, then that gives us a chance. But unfortunately, is it Dan? Dan, yeah. Unfortunately, Dan, sometimes they have to just learn and get burned. And sorry, Bill, I told you to get pre-approval. They will not accept their offer without one get one yeah and as i mentioned before this is an important part and, of the and it's yeah. sometimes the end for people to really listen it takes them to get burned and to miss out on something they love to really take the initiative and make the call and get pre-approved mm -hmm. but yeah one one is what i'll do respectfully i uh just a couple other points and if there are other questions or points of feedback his his presentation had a clear flow to it let's talk about the buyer let's talk about him and the team. Let's talk about key questions. Let's talk about the process. And then where do we go from here? So if you don't feel like you've got a clear game plan, think about what are the bullet points? What are the, what's the outline of a conversation that and he hit helped, pretty clearly? And what helped me get to it guys, just think about yourself. If you were buying a home and you're meeting somebody, what would you want to hear? Mm -hmm. What would make sense to you? And that's how I've formulated this. Cause I've had great from our team, great, forms, you know, I, I get these great presents, but it's how you present them. It's how you go through it. You know, it's getting them to talk about themselves. You know, when you're meeting someone, you start talking about yourself, you're more comfortable. Then telling them a little bit about me, how I started makes me a person. Mm -hmm. And then how we're going to help you succeed. That's important. Mm -hmm. And ultimately 
what you can expect when money's due. I just go over what's important and yeah, it, it makes it flow to a point where I don't have to think. I just get to a conversation and we're- Well, and because of that flow, I'll just add, uh, the, queuing up the buyer agency agreement and the consumer guide conversation was really natural. Like it was like, oh, well now this is obviously what we would do. Most people aren't doing this. You said you you haven't had a single person decline you thus far this year. Yeah, this year when you queued up, gotten one hundred thousand percent. But I mean, it's just if they're willing to take time and meet you, they're going to sign that. That's oh, that's my opinion. You know, you give them what's in it for them, why it's valuable. Just I mean, it's it shouldn't be scary contract or are they going to sign it? They have a goal. They're willing to take time out of their day to meet a realtor to talk about how they can meet their goal. So that's going to expedite the process. It's that simple. Yep. And having confidence and just like you, you made it easy on me. You asked me what if I went out, I was already going to approach that. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't be afraid to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Give, giving them, look, if you're not happy with me, if I look bad, smell bad, I'd say all that just to be funny. <laughs> you call me, I'll rip it up. Mm -hmm. like, it's not, this isn't to inhibit your ability to buy a house to make it easier. Like, yeah. So, yeah. To ensure you're going to get a high believe. level of service. Right. Mm -hmm. Other questions or ideas? Where do you have your buyer's meetings? Um, mainly here, mainly here in the office. I like meeting my clients in the office, especially on the weekends. Um, but sometimes if it's like a, like a, like a hot lead from Zillow or something, I'll have it at the house that we go look at, you know, sometimes the, the instant gratification, people want what they want. Like, yeah. I want to see this house. Well, all right, let's go look at it, but I'm going to bring a buyer presentation with me. And if I can, have a comfortable, nice, valuable presentation, we'll have one. Or here's my presentation. When's a good time for us to meet one or the other? But mm -hmm. I'll have it at the house. I had it at coffee shops. I had one at Duncan the other day. Um, they're up in Twinsburg, moving down towards here. So I'm, I'm, we met in the middle at Duncan up north. Um, just to their comfort. I, I put it in there. I give them options. I don't give them an option if they want to meet or not. I give them an option of where do you want to meet. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I, you know, like before setting up an appointment with somebody ask them their schedule <laughs> it's crazy how that works it's like what do you work oh you're off by four you want to meet at like five o'clock we can talk about what i can do to help you mm -hmm. like who no one says no to that i already pinned you i know you're available yeah so um I know some some agents will say meet to develop a game plan develop a strategy it's a, like it's a working it's not a so i can get you to sign something so see if we're a good fit see if we can really put a plan together. just but yeah it's it's Right. Not just, I don't bring anything up about signing anything. It's just yeah. about how I can tell you about what I do as a buyer agent, how I can help you win in this market. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining in person or online. Uh, we're, we're at time. Um, thanks again, Roman, for opening up the playbook. Uh, that, was, that was really well done. Uh, this was recorded, so we'll post it on the Facebook page for anybody who wants to pick that up. I loved the... Uh, if you want to sleep on it, you're not going to sleep in it. And my ability is my availability. I thought those were two good one-liners. Uh, so, well, well done.